Okay, Article 625, Electric Vehicle Power Transfer System. This is gonna be so much fun. This is just like, you got electric vehicles, you had a charger, and now the whole world is turned upside down. And before I get going in here, Bill, um, tell us, you've told us before, uh, we're in 625 at the beginning, that there's four components. And tell us a little about the four components that becomes mainstream, where one time it was like way out there. And if you, and I, you know, I watch watches, the Apple watches. I see people walking around, Brian, you have a watch. And I'm looking at them thinking, all I do is think about Dick Tracy. I think it was Dick right. Tracy. Yeah. That's all I do <clears throat> is exactly. that one time, this, this futuristic where you gotta have a phone and do all, you can watch. I mean, it's like crazy. It's like, no, this is mainstream. This is real stuff. Right. So Bill, tell us about the four parts and what, what becomes mainstream. Yeah. Excited. Go ahead. So in this area, yeah, I, I, the way I explain it is four main areas that are going to be connected essentially for the foreseeable future, and that's PV, photovoltaic systems, energy storage systems, <clears throat> and electric vehicles, and load management. And so those four together create a scenario that um, is is unique. But why? Uh, but why is that unique? Why are these four together? I mean, we're not talking about tomatoes and apples. I mean, like, yeah. well, what are we talking? Mm. What are these four are doing that's transforming? What, yeah, what's if, the if disruption you take, here? If you take any one of these away from the equation, it, it becomes severely uh, hampered. But what, what because, are they adding? What are yeah, they, what, what are they adding? Is, solar only works during the day. Okay. Okay. Um, and storage is expensive. Mm -hmm. Energy storage is expensive. Mm -hmm. Electric vehicles are catching on quickly and price of fuel keeps going up. And so electric vehicles become a financially reasonable way of having a lot of energy storage okay. uh, as that technology continues to get better. And then as we manage these resources, which is generation and storage all together, and we're talking, let's say, at a residential level, mm -hmm we still have to manage our loads because we've gotten used to being able to, to take power from the grid at any time with as much as we want up to the ratings of our equipment, right? And so when we stick all these things together, we can optimize in a way that we couldn't before. And it's inefficient to put in a large stationary system because they're expensive. And then you, you have to stationary argue, how do, you, how do you monetize that? And all day. Yeah, how do you monetize <clears throat> that? It, I'm at work. I'm not even using it or whatever, you know, so it's there's ways of doing that, but <clears throat> You know, what if I had a long power outage? Am I going to install a system large enough to handle that one power outage that happens occasionally? No And so we can get into all the details of that. We'll do that later when we yeah. talk about 705 and all right. that but just to realize that you're you may have a modest size uh, energy storage system at your house That's there all the time for backup power and things like that but then you come home and you plug in your electric vehicle and you've just dramatically changed this entire scenario. So that's really what we're going to talk about. All right, all right Jason, let me get into the introduction slide. I want to cover that. Yep. I want to go here. Okay, part one of Article 625 has a scope. 625.1 says, and the title is Electric Vehicle Power Transfer System, where it used to be electrical vehicle charging equipment. And it says Article 625 covers the installation of conductors and equipment associated with electrical vehicles for the purposes of charging. I got, I don't have a problem with that. Okay, I, I totally get that. But when it gets into power exported by directional current flow, this is where it's been evolving. So, so Jason, tell us about a little bit of history. Uh, Bill is saying, hey, you know, we got these things coming together and there's reasons for them, but what's going on? A little history, where we're at and, and where we're going to go and why we need to know Everybody needs to know this mainstream. Go yeah, ahead. yeah, no, it's uh, and what Bill's describing is really the future of is a microgrid, as as it's described in NFPA 70. We're going to see more of that. Um, and uh, what's been happening is you, everybody who's been looking at this article uh, through the code or working with any of this equipment has seen a lot of changes in names. Um, all the terms get changes, and you'll continue to see terms get changed because the product safety standards are, be, are being evolved and, and everything. But now what you see here is we're not saying it's charging equipment. We're saying that it's supply equipment, right, EVSE. And the reason why is because the charger, for the most part, and all AC charging, the charger has been moved into the car. Okay. So we now have a battery charger in the car. We have the battery management system. We have a, usually a higher voltage uh, DC battery pack in there. 
uh, between 400 to 1,000 volts, depending on what the, the car is typically. Um, and then we have this new thing that's coming, which is uh, we see it today in um, fast chargers like Tesla superchargers, where you're actually not connecting AC through a charger that's in the car, um, which is you know very s simple setup, simple, but it's also very power limited. Now we can connect directly to the DC high voltage pack, and this allows us to send much higher currents back and forth to the car. This opens up a whole new world, which is this idea, like Bill's describing, where, oh, we can actually export a significant amount of power from a car to power useful loads. So that's where this bi-directional concept comes in, and this is where NFPA 70 is fortunate. Which is the code book. Which is the code, sorry. That's uh, 70. The NEC, um, which is now we have baked in there a recognition that there's now uh, EVPE, or electric vehicle power export equipment, is an option. And this is going to now op, you know, uh, uh, allow s different systems uh, to be placed out there, including in a home, that would not only charge a car, but would be capable of allowing that car to export power to loads. And some people are certainly talking about using EVs as well to help support Electrical the vehicles, you're saying? Yeah, that's right, electrical vehicles to be uh, uh, grid resources, we call them, which is that they'll actually interact with the grid as it's well. It's called virtual power Virtual plant. power plant, VPP. VPP, you might go on the internet, VPP, virtual power plant, and that is this. Let's, I wanna go back to Bill for a second, and I'm gonna go back and let me, what I like, what was I talking about? Remind me what I was talking about. <laughs> Bill's saying, listen, you know, we got these things that are coming together, and it's becoming a little bit more mainstream that because of reliability, for different reasons, people want to be able to have their own power, okay? But batteries, or energy storage, is expensive. The car power itself, that amount of power, if you had to buy the batteries, would probably cost the cost of the car. So you can just explain to somebody that's, I need to have an energy, don't you want energy storage, sweetheart, at our house? <laughs> Guess what? I'm gonna get energy storage for our house. You go out and you buy an electric vehicle. You know what I mean? But we have to make that integration inside here. So Bill is saying, listen, we're moving in this direction more and more and more. We need energy storage. Instead of it being just stationary sitting there, I can have a vehicle that I can move and I can take it somewhere else and I can bring it back to that location and I can use it whenever I might need you. So it's evolving. And now, we, and now the virtual power transfer is where the electric, electric utilities are saying, well, listen, if we have all these electric vehicles and if you sign a contract with us, we, we can work a special deal with you that if we need power because our grid is limited in capacity, you, when you park, park, park your car and you are connected to the grid, we then will actually take power from your battery. And we now have all these cars that have all these batteries. It's a virtual power plant. And so we just simply will start extracting the power for maybe a few seconds because uh, I don't know enough about this, but apparently when you, when you have to get money, I mean, you have to get power from other source as a utility, the cost of that power is like beyond imagination the cost. I mean, like it's like not even conceivable that you could charge that much. You're like, well, wait a minute now, you got your electric vehicle. So, hey, can we have a deal here, Peter? Right. I mean, if I need it, can you share a little bit? You're like, yeah, sure, no problem. You're gonna give me some kind of deal here. So we're evolving into more and more. Well, that's gonna be power export right. for the utility yeah. purposes. Brian, were you gonna say anything at all? Well, well yeah, so a, a couple of things. Number one, I think that this is a mentality shift that's been mm -hmm. coming for quite a while. You know, I know that there's people probably like me that are really into EVs for the fun aspect of it more than anything else. Uh, I'm not purchasing one for any reason other than I think they're cool. You know, it's like buying a Lamborghini or a Corvette. Well, but now that I have it and I'm gonna be able to take advantage of some rebates and some tax credits and whatnot, and I've got literally sitting there, you know, 80 or 100 uh, kilowatt hours of power yeah, now something that I would have never installed at my house, which is any type of interactive system. I'm, we've got trees, I can't do solar, the battery thing doesn't make any sense because who wants to spend money on something that you can't see and doesn't do anything? Now all of a sudden I'm thinking, I'm like, you yeah, know, <laughs> if I got that big old battery sitting there, I probably don't even have to convince my wife. I can just say, hey, it'd be like your laptop, but the power goes out, things just keep working as long as my truck's plugged in. Well, as you're speaking, my brain was thinking this. I was gonna go over to Mario and Peter, because they're not the experts here, they're just trying to, you know, they're watching what's happening inside here. And, and, and I was thinking about them, I'm thinking, wow, 
how many electric vehicles are already out there? That people have an electric vehicle and they're like, wait a minute now, could I connect my car? We already have a base of millions of electric vehicles out there. So at somebody is gonna say, wait a minute now, we're gonna make an interconnection device in some way to take electric vehicles. So there's already, it isn't like we're just starting. There's a lot of electric vehicles out there and more and more and more before we can start connecting them together. So Mario, what are your thoughts quickly about what, what's going on as they're talking here? Uh, like to piggyback off of Brian's part, I just think it's really cool. I just, I, I love technology. I, I love the aspect that I could do multiple things with this technology. I could use it as a car. I could use it to charge my house. I mean, you can sell it to it's the, a win -win the power to, to the utility. I could sell it to make p power to the utility. It's a win-win. Peter? I think it's cool energy storage system that you drive around with. It's bi-directional. I do have concerns with the longevity of it. In my mind, it's, you know, this is something that's going to get a lot of use. So how long would the product last? So there's a lot of questions. Yes. Okay. But the, and, okay. Well, yeah, no. it's, well, it's all about money when you uh, get right, right down to it. Yeah, I mean, that's right. cool is cool. <laughs> and, and so, you know, we obviously buy a lot of stuff that doesn't matter about the money. But um, <clears throat> at, at the end of the day, we're talking about trying to optimize this stuff. And so, you know, and there's going to be all kinds of, you know, various applications and things like that we'll optimize. But at the end of the day, electrical power is getting more expensive continually, and it will for a variety of reasons, not just economics. <clears throat> and so um, the, the, the fact is that we're, how, how do we take these things that we already own or that we mm -hmm. could own because we can now justify that cost? Right. And the key is you have to get it monetized at the utility level because you can't just say, oh, I'm just going to use my electric vehicle battery just because I want to. Yeah, absolutely not. I'm not touching that battery unless you give me good money for it. All right, we don't just like, like you said, we'll work a deal out, and as long as it's really good for me financially and it's also good for you financially, that would be your win-win situation, right? And so this is all about money. This is all about utilization of these resources effectively, and there we go. All right, now, this whole electric vehicle stuff, this started with Edison when he, after he got kicked out of the electrical industry, he went into the batteries. I mean, he was, and batteries were around, you know what I'm saying? So you read history about electricity. I mean, Volta, when he came up with the, the voltage pile, I mean, that was a game changer. It changed chemistry. It changed major industries. And the batteries that they had were like thousands of, of piles of rooms of batteries. Well, Edison was trying to figure out how do we get it down? And what happened was the electric vehicle was a big, big seller and a big deal in the early 1900s. And the reason it was primarily driven by women. A lot of times electricity was driven by the needs of women to make it convenient for them. Washing machines, toasters, a lot of, well, electric vehicles was a big deal because women in general did not want to have a, a gas powered car because they would have to get out in front of the car and start the car mechanically. Where if you get a, 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 just a switch, you plug it in. Now, and remember something, they're not driving across the United States, you know what I mean, in the early 1900s. It, it's cons conspicuous consumption, it's convenience to be able to go, you can probably live two miles out of the city, you're like in the country. I mean, you're like way out there, you know what I mean? So you have, the elect they're doing everything is great and everything worked great in that market until one thing changed and electric vehicles died. Anybody know what it was? Don't tell me if you know, if you work for me. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody know what happened to electric vehicles, why it died? Probably the gas industry. Nope. <clears throat> nope, it wasn't. They didn't have electricity on cars, right? I mean, that's why you, were, you started that right. way, right? But somebody thought about the idea of making an electric starter. Electric starter. <clears throat> ah. mm. As soon as you had an electric starter, well, the batteries are a pain. I mean, you got to maintain them. You got all this other stuff. But for, for a person who didn't want the, the, the starting, going out there and starting it, guys are like, man, I love going out there. Give me a little exercise. And other people are like, yeah, I don't want Starter came out, electric vehicles died. Market went away. So that's a game, right, disruption. So now let's get back to where we're at here. <clears throat> now today, um, there are vehicles. This is the Ford Lightning, I think. Mm -hmm. And this vehicle is, is advertised and marketed to be able to, to do this exporting, as Jason, you talked about, or the ability to do bi-directional, kind of back and forth kind of application here. Um, there's approximately about a thousand people who actually have 
the interface between the electric vehicle and the premises. So now we need to make a connection between those two. Um, right now it appears to be rather expensive. It's a proprietary type of system, a, a charger specifically for that car to be installed by only installers that has been specifically licensed to know the vehicle by Ford and whoever that's doing that application. So this is the beginning though, Jason, right? I mean, this is just the starting that we can't go and take any electric vehicle and connect it. And when we get into 705, which is where we're interconnecting power production systems. So that's what we're leading up to. So I'm gonna keep going, if it's okay with you guys. Yep. Now, we gotta understand what electric vehicle is. It's not gonna be these golf carts and that's, off-road, self-propelled electric industrial trucks hoist lifts, transport golf truck, golf carts, airline ground support equipment, tractors, boats are not electric vehicles for the purpose of this Article 625.